There are early Islamic sources that tell us something about Muhammad in the Quran. Muslims claim and say and believe that Muhammad is a moral example for humanity and supposed to be a holy prophet and only preach the message of Allah. But the problem is, these early Islamic sources tell us a dark side of Muhammad and how he was really inspired by Satan. This Islamic source says Surah chapter 53 was edited. It states one day that Arabs persecuted Muhammad for preaching Allah. So Muhammad bowed down to their gods and worshipped them and even added verses in the Quran in that Surah, Surah chapter 53, supporting polytheism. Then Muhammad wrote that how he was inspired by Satan to actually write down that verse, and how Satan possessed and took over him to actually write that. So the verse got edited and took it out to make Muhammad look moral. One of these sources called the life of Muhammad, which I'm going to read. Now the apostle of his ancients was the welfare of his people, wishing to attract them as he could. It has been mentioned that he longed for a way to attract them, and that the method is to adopt. And it's what Ibn Hamid told me, the Simon M. B. Ishaq told him, yes, and then Zayed. And when the apostle saw that his people turned his back for him, and he was pained by their estrangement from what he brought them from God. He longed that he there should come to him. From God, a message that would be reconciled his people to him because of his love for his people and his anxiety over them. It would delight him if the obstacle that made his task so difficult could be removed so that he meditated on the project and longed for it. And it was dear to him. Then God sent down by the star when it says, your comrade ears and not and is deceived. He speaks not. Reads his words. Have you thought of El Lat and Aluza? Keep in mind, these are false pagan deities. And Manat, another false pagan deity, the third. Satan, when he was meditating upon it and desiring to bring it to his people and put upon his tongues, these are the exalt, Gary, Wounton Christians, it's approved. When Kaish heard that they were delighted and greatly pleased at the way in which he spoke of their gods, and they listened to him while the believers were holding that what their prophet brought them from the Lord was true and not suspecting a mistake or vain desires or to slip. When we reached the procession and ended the sermon in which he prostrated himself, the Muslims prostrated themselves when they were prophet prostrated confirming what he brought and obeying his command and the polytheists of Korash and others who were in the mosque prostrated when they heard the mention of their gods so that everyone in the mosque believer and unbeliever prostrated except Al-Walad B. al and who was an old man who could not do so. So he took a handful of dirt from the valley and bent it over and then the people dispersed and the Kaish went out delighted at what had been. About what had been spoken about their gods saying Muhammad has spoken of her gods in splendid fashion, he alleged what he read that they are the exalted Gara whose intercession is approved. The news reached the prophet's companions who were in Abyssinia, it being reported that Kayash had accepted Islam. So some men started to return while others remained behind. Then Gabriel came to the apostle and said, What have you done, Muhammad? You have raised to these people something I did not bring you from God. And you have said, What did he not say to you? The apostle was bitterly grieved and was greatly in fear of God. So God sent down a revelation, for he was merciful to him, confronting him and making light of the affair and telling him that every prophet and apostle before him desired as he desired and wanted what he wanted and Satan interjected something into his desires as he had on his tongue. So God annulled what Satan had suggested and God established his ver verses. You are just like the prophets and apostles and God sent down. We have not sent a prophet or apostle before you, but when he longed, Satan cast suggestions into his tongue, but God will announce what Satan has suggested and God will establish his verses, God being knowing and wise. Thus, God relieved his prophet grief and made him feel safe from his fears and annulled what Satan had suggested in the word words used above about their gods. By his revelation are yours, the males, and his the females, that were indeed an unfair division. They are nothing but names which your fathers gave them as far as words to whom he pleases and accepts. How can the intercessions of their gods avail with them? And when the annulment of what Satan had put on the prophet's tongue came from God, Kai said Muhammad has repented of what he said about the position of your gods, with Allah altered it and brought something else. Now these two words which Satan had put upon the apostle's tongue were in the mouth of every polytheist and they became more violently hostile. And to the Muslims and the apostles, followers, meanwhile, those of his companions who had left Abyssinia, and when they heard that the people of Mecca had accepted Islam, when they prostrated themselves with the apostle, heard when they approached Mecca that the report was false and none came into the
No one came into the town without the promise of protection, particularly of those who did come into Mecca and stayed there until he migrated to Medina and were present. Abadar with him and Uthman B. in a fan with his wife, Rakoya, the of the apostle, and Abu Hafibin, Uthba, and his wife, Shahal of Shahilo, and a number of others in all 33 men. Now, this is the real text itself, the life of Muhammad, which I'm reading off a website now. This website also brings commentary to the satanic verses and it explains it here. The complete text of Altabar's account of the satanic verses follow as it could be seen from an Altabar's writing as evidence of a conclusion of that Muhammad was used by Satan to excuse his own conduct, Muhammad blamed Satan, and then he defirmed all the prophets when he claimed that Satan cast words into the mouths of all the prophets. In other words, Muhammad charged that all the prophets uttered words under the inspiration of Satan. The Quranic verses itself of the satanic verse woven it into the very fabric of the Quran, Muhammad offered not the slightest proof to sustain his wicked defamation of Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Elijah, and Estrada. Never did we ever send a message to a prophet before you, but when he did recite the revelation on Nebuchadnezzar or, or spoke shy Satan through some falsehood in it, but all astonished that which shall shade Satan throws in then all. A his revelation and all is all nowhere and while wise Surah at IJ 22 Verse 52. Now, there is so, so much more. I won't be able to read this all, but you are free to read it on your own time here on a website called Muhammadism, the Satanic Verses, and the Quran. He has a cold, good, deep view summary of the Satanic Verses of the Quran, and it talks about the Quran and the false deception of Islam. Now, I will also like to read the last final parts of this article because this part is important. This is the last final parts here, five final words, by means of the religiosity in the Devotion, this false view of Allah has bound more than a billion Muslims in religious slavery, bearing them from the gift of salvation, salvation in Christ. Indeed, he has vanicated them against the true understanding of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see many Christians mock the Muslim faith, but let's not do this. What this article is telling us here is the truth. Many Muslims are in the religious slavery of the false deception lines of Islam. But we can free people. We can help people. Well, we can't, but Christ can. The only thing we can do is help Christ by spreading his message and spreading his gospel to people who are in a slavery or stuck in the false deception of Islam. Let's make a difference in the world today.